What's going on, everybody? Just like I told you, here's another episode on my video channel here on the YouTubes, you know what I'm saying? All right, uh, so we're gonna take a look at Pentax raw development as it pertains to the K3 Mark III. It's pretty much the same as with all the previous Pentax cameras, um, you know, give or take a couple of items that they may have removed, like a, at one time, I believe with the K200D, K10D, K100D, I believe as well. Uh, they had a, like a pencil stencil kind of look. I can't recall exactly etched, I think it was called. Something around those lines, but they, they removed it. So we're just gonna go with what the K3 Mark III has because that's what I'm gonna use to demonstrate this and it's gonna be a fair amount to cover. So let's just dive right into it. And yeah, let's just go. So the very first thing that I have here is uh, from when I was shooting uh, some motorsports. And what you wanna do is uh, in order to get into the raw thing, you press the exposure auto exposure lock button it brings up this menu anyway and then from here you can scroll down um, so that's the custom image mode that it had chosen I was shooting it in auto custom image but anyway for some reason it's on landscape and uh, you can raise the sensitivity you can add digital filters uh, add clarity skin tone uh, HDR capture off. I uh, don't even, yeah, that's completely grayed out. Can't use that because that only pertains to JPEGs. Uh, so that is another thing. What Pentax should have done is things that you aren't, you cannot use should not even show up here because this is raw development, not JPEG development, right? But anyway, they didn't do that. So all this distortion correction, all that stuff, none of that matters. So let's just go back up here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, there we go. So let's go to the custom image landscape. And now you press the info button to get all the available options that you can change. And within those options, you've got your saturation, your hue, high and low key adjustment. What does that do? Well, interestingly enough, it actually adjusts both the high and low key at the same time. If you look at the, uh, what do we call it? If you look at uh, right here over on the left side at the bottom, if you actually look at the curves, the tone curves, you'll see that as it gets darker, it's going down and as it gets brighter, but it's not, you, you can't change low key or high key. You're changing all of it together. So let's not do that yet and let's go to the contrast highlight. So here is where you can raise the contrast or raise the highlights and drop them down slightly. Right, you're just changing the contrast of uh, that lighting parameter. So notice you can barely see the rims on this Porsche. So let's bump the shadow contrast way up and now let's go back up to the high low key adjustment. Let's get that up a couple notches. Actually, let's go one notch down, press OK. And then it takes us back to the previous menu. And from here, uh, let's do OK. Now from here, we can increase the sensitivity. So let's raise the sensitivity a tad here. Let's go, let's go 0 0.7, plus 0.7, hit OK. Now let's go back in here and do some fine tuning. And within the fine tuning here, what I'm going to do is drop this low high key adjustment a bit. No, I'm not. That's because you're adjusting both at the same time, so it is a little, little difficult to nail 100%. And yeah, I know the windshield is completely blown out, but I just want to demonstrate the shadow recovery. Uh, and I think, oh, let's drop that down. It's a little, it's a tad bit better. Okay, that should be okay. And now let's uh, take a look at this before we save it oh yeah 
nice details. You can actually see the details in the shadow areas and everything. Nice, nice, nice. Now let's take a look at what it was before. Okay, there we go. So there's the before and there's after. Now notice that the information uh, at the bottom of the screen hasn't changed, right? Because technically speaking, when the camera shot the picture, these were the settings that were used, the EV compensation, all that stuff. So any of the post-processing that you're doing is not going to have any bearing on these numbers from when the time of capture happened. But this is a pretty remarkable difference in regards to pulling out the shadows and uh, brightening up the image. It's a pretty big difference. Pretty big difference. And I have some other uh, examples as well um, that I already took uh, back to back. So let's see here. So there's this one where I raised uh, the shadows. I think I ex underexposed this one by I think two stops, but the thing is you can only raise everything by one stop in camera, which is where the limitation came in, which is why I didn't bother doing this in regards to comparing it to software. Uh, but so that's the original. That's how dark it was. And I was able to actually pull all that detail out. So there is a fair amount of headroom within these cameras to actually bust out some amazing things with no software, just using the camera to develop the raw image directly. And I mean, it's three completely and utterly different looks. You've got your high contrast here, lower contrast, but sharpness and detail. Let's zoom in and look at the grain on the arm of the couch. Look at that. There's a lot of detail there. It's a lot of detail. And there's other things you can do as well, like, uh, I mean, these are all things you can just play with on your own. Well, let's manage this bad boy. Okay, you can resize. Let's see, what size is small, medium, extra small. Uh, where is oh, levels adjustment? There we go. So, info switch points. I want to switch that point actually. Nope. Can I raise that up? So that's bringing it dark. Okay, so if I switch and bring this down, there we go. Okay, now we can really get into, <laughs> that's crazy. I've never actually played with this before. That is, wow. That is a lot of adjustment. That is nuts. Oh man, that's nuts. I wonder what it's going to see if I auto adjust. Oh, nothing, eh? Yeah, not much. Okay, yeah, and of course you've got your weight balance adjustment, Clamore correction, movie edit, which this isn't a movie, Pro raw, oh, cross processing, nope. Okay, where's the filters? That's what I wanted to find here. Actually, there was something else that I saw too. So you can crop, resize, oh, JPEG resize. That's not going to work. So there actually does seem to be more that you can do with the raw image than you can uh, with the JPEG. I mean, these things, I believe, are all JPEG specific. You can't use any of these with the raw. However, resizing the image uh, and the aspect ratio to 1, 1, 16 by 9, 3, 2, or 4 3rd, all of that you can actually do in the raw development. But these, I believe, are missing. Um, some of them, anyway, are missing. So let's. Uh, go back to that other image here and let's see what we have for yeah, that's JPEG image here we go 
So you can change your aspect ratio, 16 by 9, or 16 to 9, 3, 2, 4 thirds, or Instagram. So, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. There, there's a lot that you can actually do. So, I just wanted to give a quick look as to uh, the parameters that are available within the rod development built into every Pentax camera. Uh, yeah, it's actually quite a lot that you can do, and it actually does, it, it's very powerful, at least uh, as it is for the K3 Mark III. I do need to dive more into each element of it. Uh, maybe I'll do a video um, series of uh, specific rod development uh, for the saturation, hue, color, uh, and then move on to uh, the highlight, shadows, things like that. Uh, you know, just try to keep it concise and each topic is something separate, but it's all part of the rod development. If there's something you'd be interested in, let me know. I'll leave it in the comments below and I will do what I can to help you all out as I always do. If you want to support the channel, I leave that info at the bottom of the description. If you have any other com questions or comments, leave them down below. And uh, that's going to conclude this video. I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.